I'm equalizing on this side. Okay. Again, write down the phone number. We will take your calls later in the show at 844-687-7669. Tonight, we're, we've got a program that uh, we've anticipated uh, for quite some time. Uh, we're going to be talking about flat earth theory, but more specifically, we're going to be talking with two of the people who have kind of um, led the, the the movement, if you will, Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer. They're also the subjects of a documentary that's on Netflix called Behind the Curve. Mark and Patricia, welcome to Beyond Reality Radio. It's a pleasure to have you on with us. Hey. Hello. <laughs> Hey, hey, thanks Thanks for coming on. We've been really looking forward so to the I, show. Yeah, I've got to just kind of clear this up just because um, I think you've both been on the program before. And I think yes. uh, the last time you were, we actually had a fill-in host. Bruce Markison was doing the show for Jason and I. We missed it, which was disappointing to us, but it just the timing worked out that way, right? Is that what happened? Yeah, yeah, that, that's what happened. It was about uh, four months ago. Well, wow. Well, we're happy to have you here, and we're actually happy to be here with you this time. How about that one? <laughs> Great. Hey, welcome back. So let's, um, th this is kind of a short segment here, but um, I want to get both of your answers to this question. Mm -hmm. How did this whole notion of a flat earth kind of uh, first appear on your radar to make it something that you're interested in pursuing? Mark, you go first. Okay. Uh, it, I got into it in the summer of 2014. I was looking at a whole bunch of different conspiracies and got really bored with them. I mean, I literally was conspiracy bored, and everybody knows about Flat Earth. Everybody hates it. doesn't matter what you believe in. Uh, flat Earth is not a fun topic. And I thought, okay, I'll just take a look at it. I should be able to destroy it over a weekend, and that was the worst thing ever. Uh, nine, nine months later... At the beginning of 2015, I just decided, okay, I can't prove the globe in a court of law anymore, so I will create a series of videos called Flat Earth Clues, put them out on the internet, and four years later, here we are, conferences and celebrities and a documentary and a book and radio shows, and it just never ends. Patricia? <laughs> well, so, and your, your whole thought was just putting these videos out there and getting the public's thoughts and perceptions. On, yeah, on. yeah, yeah. I thought that somebody could just shoot it down. I said, look, I, I, I consider myself a, a clever problem solver, but uh, I, I had to be wrong about this. There's no way Flat Earth could be real in any capacity. And, but the internet hive mind is very, very intelligent. So it's like, okay, tell me, you know, I put my phone number and my email address, and my real name and you know, broke all the internet rules basically and, and said, okay, come at me. And I thought some academic would have shot me down in the first 30 days and it turned out to be the opposite. Patricia, how did you start? How did this attract your attention? Well, I was looking at lots of interesting truth topics on YouTube and I wound up uh, looking at a couple of a couple of videos that were debunking the moon landing, one of them astronauts gone wild, and another, a funny thing happened on the way to the moon. Both videos can be found on YouTube. They're by a guy named Bart Sibrell. One thing led to another suggested video, Mark's Flat Earth Clues. And that was March of 2015. Watched some of those and then did some other research, watched other videos, even debunking videos. And then several months later, I, I I just had to do something to get involved in this because I realized that the earth is not a globe and I want to jump in and try to help wake people up. So I started my own YouTube channel called Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. And like Mark said, conferences, meetups, and then the documentary on Netflix and, and more amazing things yet to come. Well, and you say conferences and meetups, and this is a community of people that seems to be growing and growing uh, quickly, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. Uh, very committed people, people with different views about how the whole flat earth works, how it all looks on a map, how a model might work. But we all have one thing in common uh, that w we all believe that we don't live on a, a, a ball spinning in uh, in the blackness of space. Well, and, J and JV and I have talked in the past, and this was something that really we didn't hear much of. We, you might catch a little bit here and there, you know, going back five, six, seven years ago. But you, you never really heard much about it. But I'll be honest, lately over the last year or two, well, about probably two or three years, it seems to be popping up all over the place. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, we... And there's nothing uh, in it for us, meaning we're not making money. We're not being paid. Some people sell T-shirts and coffee mugs and stuff like that, or they might monetize something on a, their small YouTube channel. The, the, the impetus for all of us involved in this is – we have found something that we believe to be vitally important for the world to know about that we've all been lied to on a massive level. That's why we do this. We do this not as a job. We do it as a passion. Yeah. 
How much of this is about um, this particular theory, which I know is obviously what we're talking about and what is important, versus how much of it is just about demonstrating that we're not always, and in many cases, uh, not being told the truth about some of these things that we talk about? I think that goes ha hand in hand, which, I mean, of course, the, the flower theory is, is the key to most of us. We, I mean, ask anybody. We, we absolutely do believe in it. But when you get into flat earth, all of a sudden it opens up everything else, uh, meaning uh, flat earth is kind of the umbrella and every other conspiracy or potential lie or everything that's been told to us over the years has to be revisited. So and we, you know, everyone knows, you know, there's a ton of conspiracies out there. But once you get into this, it's the open, open, uh, open minded experience to where you all of a sudden it's like oh man i have to look at everything again i mean i was opening reopening dusty conspiracies that i hadn't looked at in years so yeah it, it's both uh, but it's it's uh, an interesting journey we have about a minute here before we have to jump to our break um and in that time i want you both to give out your social media websites youtube channel whatever it is that um you want people to know about because we're going to continue to reference reference those throughout the course of the conversation sure patricia Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. That's my YouTube channel. Once again, it's Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes. I have a Facebook group, a very small one, by that very same name. So that's where you'll find me doing uh, pretty regular videos, and I have been since 2015. Um, my channel is called Mark Sargent. It's just my name, M-A-R-K-S-A-R-G-E-N-T. The video series is called Flat Earth Clues. And, of course, both of us are in the documentary, which is out on everything called Behind the Curve. And we actually were telling a lot of people to, to tune into that and check that out. And we get a lot of questions about that show when we come <laughs> back, let alone just we, we really want to get into the basis of you know, how the Earth is flat and, mm -hmm. and how you guys actually look into uh, your, your scientific testings and so forth. But sure. you're listening to Jason and JV, Beyond Reality Radio. We're going to take a quick break. A lot more to come. We'll be back after this. So about a documentary that is on Netflix called Behind the Curve. Now, uh, Mark and Patricia, I'm not sure if I, I don't know, do we call you leaders of this movement? Uh, no. <laughs> how, how, about, how about ambassadors? How about that? Yeah. Very right. Diplomatic. <laughs> Very diplomatic. You know, in, in Flat Earth, all of the people who are involved with exploring truth, we prefer to think of it as a leaderless movement. But we do have p ambassadors who sort of take front runner roles and they do it on their own. No one's voted in, but um, everyone leads themselves. Yeah. And, it, and it's content driven, meaning if you have a channel and your channel resonates with people and you get a lot more subscribers, you get invited to things and you do conferences, you do speaking engagements and you just move your way up the, the ladder. No one's left out. No. It's up to the individual. Yeah. Mark, Mark, when you when you started your, you said you were kind of looking at various conspiracy theories, mm -hmm. and the flat Earth idea, you know, uh, came into your view, and then you created some videos expecting them to be challenged. They weren't necessarily. Um, had you was there anybody else doing that kind of work at the time, or were you pioneering this? Well, there were a couple guys that were doing. That's funny you'd mention that. Um, there was a couple guys from Europe and a guy from Thailand uh, and another one here in the states, a, a Canadian, as a matter of fact, who was just visiting the states. And but they were the stuff they were making were kind of if you if you treat it like a university there, they were introducing like 200 level and 300 level books. It was pretty advanced stuff. And the stuff that I came out with literally was 101 flat earth 101, which is flat earth clues. I and mean, there was almost no math in it. And so when I got into it, it helped because then they could people could jump from my stuff backwards to their stuff and then everything moved forward. So it ended up being symbiotic in a way. It was kind of cool. So you kind of brought in uh, flat Earth for dummies. I did. I, I'm that's that's about as good as way. If flat Earth is a university, I am the freshman recruiter. No, no question. So let's talk about this this documentary for a minute. First of all, yeah. uh, when when was it made? I I, I know I, from what I can tell, it was recently put up on Netflix, and Jason and I both watched it recently. It, um, when was it made, and how were you approached to be part of it? Sure, sure, sure. It was shot initially. We were, I was approached in April of 2017 by a film team out of Los Angeles called Delta V, and you know they were trying to come up with a human interest piece, and they thought it'd be a cool topic. And we shot most of 2017 all the way from, uh, we really started kicking in in May 
uh, and then grabbed other people and got them involved. And then th the big climax was down in North Carolina at the, uh, at the conference in November of 2017. Then they edited for a couple months. It started hitting the film festivals in April of last year. Patricia and I got involved with uh, with some of the film festival stuff. We went to the premier up uh, in Toronto. It did 22 film festivals in seven countries and then was released in November on iTunes and Amazon and YouTube. And then finally, just a few weeks ago, that's when Netflix picked it up. And again, I completely underestimated their market share because that's when everything just exploded. And now I, I have a hard time even looking at my schedule. It's that cluttered. Did you, uh, either of you, have any kind of creative control on this or were you just purely uh, the subjects of what the camera were pointing at? Patricia? No creative control whatsoever. They shot so much that was left on the cutting room floor. Uh, that could make a couple different movies actually <laughs> so um yeah we didn't really know what they had in mind although they told us it would be an unbiased look at flat earth in the community and so we said sure we'd love to participate it turned out to be more of an opinion piece driven by the three uh small delta v team members daniel clark and carolyn clark and oh I nick, the other man, nick ander nick Nick Ander, uh, they, they had a an opinion that they didn't really share with us from the start that Flat Earth was, you know, bad or wrong. And they ended up editing things to get that point across. Anybody who watches it, even if they think Flat Earth is bad and wrong, they can see the parts where they made it um, evident that it was an opinion piece, not a documentary with a neutral, with a neutral stance. But uh, with all of that in there, a, we didn't know there would be experts in there, an astronaut, astrophysicist, that wasn't told to us either. So um, it was all just us being ourselves, doing our daily flat earth stuff. That's how it got in this film. Well, and JV and I have been talking, I watched it initially and I told JV I had to check it out. And the, that's the one thing that we have talked about, whether we agree with you or we don't agree with you, fine, but you know, you can tell that there there's definitely a biasness in the way they cut and edited the show. Right. And I, I, from doing television for the last 13 years, 14 years of my life, I, I, I can see that. They, so it, they kind of put, they kind of put this spin on it where no matter how they, they tried to come off, they still sort of put a spin on it to, to make it seem as if, people involved in this are kind of quirky the the quirky reason... lonely we're looking for a purpose in life we'd yeah. be lost without the community we'd hold on to flat earth with our bleeding fingertips even when it's found not to be true yeah we know how they portrayed yeah. us the, sad there, but untrue there was a uh, the, the reason behind that uh, and they let it slip in the itunes uh, director's commentary which is you can only hear on itunes uh, was that it really changed for them. And I was sort of surprised they actually they actually admitted it, which was when we got to the conference and that 12-year-old kid walked up to the microphone and was asking me questions on stage, that's when they thought, okay, we've got to, we've got to make a stand here. They had, like, had a responsibility to the children. And I, it's not the first time I've heard this. I heard this from National Geographic and, and other news agencies, which was, well, it's all fun and games until kids are involved. And I'm going, well, we're not recruiting kids. You know, Flat Earth doesn't care about race or gender or religious preference, and we certainly don't care about age. I mean, we're not like a cigarette company with Joe the Camel trying to recruit kids. But that's why, that's why they tweaked it. They, it's like, okay, we're, we, up until the, I, and Patricia may disagree with me, I firmly believe they were going to try to make this thing as neutral as possible. And then it's like, because none of them, nobody in the production of this film was a flat earther. Uh, and they were very, very clear about that. Even now, you know, they'd absorb nothing through osmosis. Anyway, sorry, I rambled. No, it's okay. I got the sense, and, and Jason kind of uh, pointed out, and you, you confirmed it, that um, you know they, they were trying to portray a certain type of character would believe in the Flat Earth Theory. But I also, um, I enjoyed the way they made it real, and they demonstrated how much passion both you, Mark, and Patricia have, yeah. plus other people in this community have for, again, finding the truth, whether, whether regardless of how this shakes out, if we ultimately get an answer. Right. Um, but the truth seemed to be the most important thing here yeah yeah absolutely uh, the the truth community uh, means so much to me and there's something I, i'm fond of saying because people say oh you're doing it for the money and it's like oh come on nobody goes in to flat earth to make money 
uh, which is <laughs> I I don't want to be famous. I want to be right. And I don't care, you know, the what's the old saying, um, let the truth come and the, uh, though the heavens fall, something to that effect, which is, right. I mean, I know the truth is going to be painful. In fact, uh, National Geographic, you know, they were asking questions I'd never even heard before, which was, you know, what happens when flat earth gets out of control? You know, what happens to, to medicine? What happens to technology? What happens to civilization as we know it? And I said, look, there's going to be some growing pains. You know, the truth is all, always does that, which is why, uh, sorry, not to quote uh, somebody real quick, uh, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, our old president, when he said, only tell the public as much truth as they can handle. And I, I disagree. I, I think in this case, I think the, the public can handle quite a bit more truth. Patricia, we... Yeah, well, I, what I was going to say, but with that, if if tomorrow they came out and said the Earth was flat, yeah. do you th do you truly think that the the public, the world in general, could could handle that without? I mean, of course, I, there, I, there was a, and that everybody thought the world was flat, and then they said it was round, and that threw everybody for a hell of a curve. Well, yeah, but so, it was easier back five hundred years ago because you only had newspapers, and most of the population couldn't even read and write. Uh, nowadays, I think because, you know, you, you were talking about high speed internet and social media and 6 billion smartphones, you could get everybody on the same page. Literally. It would break the internet more than Kim Kardashian's backside. I'll tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. I mean, there's, there's the potential for a lot of chaos, no question. But at this point, and I'm not being callous when I say this, what do we got to lose? I mean, we've already messed up a lot of stuff in this world. So what, what do you got to lose by, by telling people at this point? And I honestly think that they, you because know, we've gotten help from Google and YouTube. They have not stopped us uh, in any way, shape, or form. They have only recently said they're thinking about slowing us down. Uh, you know, it's interesting go ahead. to say that because... Um, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a YouTube creator as well, and I get those uh, video updates. I don't know what the creator channel, suggestion. Whatever it is. Oh, the update. Yeah, yeah, yeah I know yeah. what you're talking about. You know, they explain their their policies and they talk about different things on, uh, for creators. And one that just came through very, very recently specifically said, and I, I took uh, offense to this because we talk about flat Earth and other topics that have similar controversy on this program. Mm. Um, they said that uh, you know s certain topics will now be um, I'm trying to remember regular regular um, relegated to a lower standing in search uh, and yeah. one of those things they specifically said was flat uh, controversial topics like flat earth theory yeah yeah and I Google saw that that was within the last couple of weeks yeah yes. yeah when when Google made an announcement recently I mean heck we were in we were in front of the one of, I think it was a Senate subcommittee. Uh, last year, uh, where Google was, they were trying to address some of the, f what they called fake news problem. And of all the topics they brought up, uh, they brought up flat earth. And when the, the story you're mentioning just came out a few weeks ago where they said, okay, they made a press announcement, which says we are going to not recommend as much on the right hand search right. bar, three uh, topics such as, and they, the three topics were, um, snake oil, which was interesting, you know, like metaphorical mm -hmm. snake oil, um, nine 11 yep. and flat earth. And it's like, right. it was like, wow. We're, we're... If there was no truth to Flat Earth, why would they be mentioning it? It's just a little crazy, kooky conspiracy yeah. to fall hat wearers. No one believes that. Yeah. We've got pictures of Earth from space. NASA provides them. You know, you've got to think about why is it mentioned? Why did uh, why did President Obama during his uh, presidency mention Flat Earth twice in speeches for no apparent reason? Flat Earth is is something that's being hidden, but also weirdly being allowed out in public consciousness. So maybe it's not that it's going to be on the internet tomorrow and everyone will go nuts. Maybe somehow there are a few people out there who are allowing it to escape little by little, drip fed into the public consciousness. Well, and even beyond that, before we take a break, um, the whole basis of YouTube was designed for people to create content of their thoughts and and their belief systems and and so forth it for for content just to get it out there and share with people mm -hmm. so now the sort of trying to cut the the legs off of those those people is just ridiculous yeah okay. the name the name youtube is you having the chance to be on the tube and if they're making that not possible anymore it needs to be 
a name change, maybe <laughs> to only certain people tube. <laughs> nice. Yeah, right. Restrict tube. I have Restricted one more question tube. before we jump to break here. Um, I wanted to ask you, Patricia, uh, you, you expressed your feelings about the documentary, and I think we agree that there was a bias associated with the with it from the filmmakers themselves. However, do you think it has helped the cause? Well, it's made a lot of people, just from my own personal experience, subscribe to my channel out of the blue ever since it came out on Netflix. And are these people only subscribing to hate watch Flat Earth or hate watch me? Maybe some, but not all of them. I think it sparked interest. And so therefore the filmmakers, maybe their plan, well, their number one plan was to have a successful film and make money, let's face it. But their other plan to kind of, you know, put a damper on Flat Earth is backfiring because look we're talking to you about it people are talking about flat earth more than ever before because the documentary is out even if it showed us with quote unquote failed experiments which we'll get to later everything's not as it was presented but um yeah it's created a new wave of interest in flat earth so it's continuing to grow it's certainly not slowed down at all all right our guests patricia steer and mark Sargent, and we're talking about the flat earth theory you're listening to Jason JV Beyond Reality Radio. We'll be back after this. Jason and JV. Phone number for the next hour if you want to call and join our discussion is 844-687-7669. We're talking with Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer about uh, the documentary Behind the Curve, also their involvement in the Flat Earth Movement. And I want to, this is a short segment, so I want to ask um, about how you, well, actually, more specifically, why is this such a passionate topic, not for just the people who are on, in your camp, who are um, trying to uh, present a case that the earth is flat, but for the other side as well. And I'm not even talking about, you know, the, the people who have something at stake. I'm just talking about people in general. This gets, mm. People get very emotional about this discussion. Yeah, yeah people get angry, super angry, and you, they can they can start screaming at you, even if you mentioned that the earth might not be a globe or that nasa potentially people way high up in nasa could be lying it could literally start a fist fight yeah it's it is the most polarizing thing i've ever seen and i don't care what you're talking about whether it be you know gay rights or black rights or women's rights or abortion right you know stem cell or veganism or veganism even. i mean flat earth is and the reason is is because it's the only conspiracy you can't walk away from Meaning, and I've I've had callers that'll that'll come after me. Uh, you know that famous one from a couple of years ago, where he says, "How dare you, young man? How dare you tell me the world isn't what I think it is?" Because every other conspiracy, you know, you can you don't want to look at nine eleven or Pearl Harbor or JFK or take your pick. You don't have to. You know there there are secrets that can be hidden in the desert. But you tell somebody that the life they've been living hasn't exactly been authentic that there's something something wrong all of a sudden it it's almost like telling somebody that they're adopted you know like a 30 year old telling the 30 year old that they're adopted and then all of a sudden you know it's like they'll their denial they'll get angry and then all of a sudden all of a sudden it's like wait a minute wait a minute what is he talking about and they'll like flash back to their childhood and it freaks them out because the globe like neo in the matrix there you go like neo in the matrix yeah, yeah. it's super super polarizing go ahead I think even beyond that, it's more that if, if if tomorrow I found out that the Earth is truly flat, it would change so well. It would change almost everything yeah. throughout my life. I'm glad that. you said that. You know, a lot of people say when you tell them about this, well, yeah, you know, it's interesting and all, but how how does it affect me? I still have to go to work tomorrow. But you actually can see how it would affect you. That's cool. Well, absolutely, because then it, it would open up endless other doors about, well, okay, so if we are in some sort of a dome-type structure, like some some say, well, then there has to be something that has created all this. Mm -hmm. yep, there you go. Huge <laughs> point, huge point, which wasn't really addressed much in the documentary, although I think all of us did talk about it, yeah. but that kind of got left on the cutting room floor. Yeah, and I came from a world where my father used to always tell me, you know, you could be a speck of dust under the nail of a giant, for all you know, but right. because you have no idea what your universe is really is, or what it consists of, or what it's made up of, or what's bigger than it, and what it's inside, and the list just goes on and on. Right. So you can just roll with that. But and we've got a ton more of stuff that uh, we're going to be getting into. Yeah, we, we we made the mistake of opening up a can of worms here when we have thirty <laughs> seconds to talk about yeah. it. So we'll, we'll <laughs> this question on the other side of the break and we will take your phone calls too at 844 
six eight seven seven six six nine. All right, our guests are Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent. We are talking the flat Earth theory. So make sure you tune in, check it out, and give us a call. You'll listen to Jason and JV Beyond Reality Radio. We'll be back after this. Thursday on the East, many of you are stuck somewhere in between. Welcome to Beyond Reality Radio with me, Jason Hawes, and the always awesome JV Johnson. There are certain topics that uh, elicit a very, very emotional response that we feature on this program. Um, like a lot clowns. of clowns, clowns, uh, clowns. just uh, elicit them. fear. <laughs> Anybody who paints a smile on their face, <laughs> they have issues. By a lot of people. Um, and uh, one of the one of the topics that does that is flat earth, earth theory. And tonight's guests, Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer, no uh, no strangers to that emotional response. Um, we will be taking your phone calls to join this discussion at eight four four six eight seven seven six six nine. Mark and Patricia have been involved in this uh, discussion for quite some time, um, and we've talked about that emotional response that they get. And I. You know, one of the things that uh, I think I know the answer to, Mark and Patricia, um, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. Let's say that we did um, wake up tomorrow and we had irrefutable proof that the Earth was flat, as opposed to what we've been taught all our lives. Yeah. Um, I, I'm still going to look up and I'm still going to see what I consider to be the sky. I'm still going to look down and I'm going to see what I consider to be the ground. Mm -hmm. Gravity's still going to pull me in the same direction. What does it change? Okay, so and I'll do it rap rapid fire, which is uh, three main things would happen. Uh, one would be academic, the second would be economic, the third would be religious. Uh, let's do the easiest one first, academic. Astronomy and astrophysics labs in every university would close, and they would close indefinitely until they could figure out what to do. The remaining physical sciences, geology, hydrology, archaeology, biology, take your pick. Those would have to be literally rebuilt from the ground up because the ground has now changed. Economically, uh, potentially, you would have to shut down world markets for several months just to figure out what happens when the dust settles. I mean, if Donald Trump got pneumonia tomorrow, the market would be affected, and that's just one guy. But the biggest would be what you mentioned earlier, which is um, if this place is built, if it is a building, then it was created by something or someone. And you're asking the, the five religious houses of this world, the big ones, um, Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Islam, and Christianity, you're all of a sudden giving all these groups leverage against science who has built this massive foundation over the last five centuries. Between those three things, <laughs> that's one of the shortest X-Men, uh, or X, sorry, X-Files smoking man meetings ever, which is, okay, what's the worst that could happen? And then all of a sudden they just rattle off that stuff. It's like, yeah, we got to keep this thing a secret for as long as possible until we can figure out how to disseminate it to the population. Uh, that's what they're w w worried about. Men in power do not take chances if they can help it. They always hedge their bets. So there you go. Well, let alone, let alone NASA would shut down. Oh, yeah, then NASA. Yes, sure. yes. <laughs> then I'm sure a huge factor would be where is all that money? I mean, where, the money, was, yes. How long, how long have they lied to us? Where is all that money gone that we supposedly have been spending on? on all these uh, these things going up. Yeah. So there's, there's all these other factors that come into play. And yeah, well, like I said earlier, all of a sudden if, if we're in a dome, well, then there's something that has created that dome. Yeah. So now now we feel like all of a sudden we're, we're ants in uh, one of those little ant home things <laughs> that people buy, you know, get at their home, mm. and we're, we're being watched. So it, it opens up these endless questions and right. fears. Are we being watched or are we being protected? And if so, either way, by what or whom? Whose God or creator is it? Yeah. Are, are, you know, that, that list goes on and on. But in the end, after all is said and done and the smoke clears from all the drama that will occur, perhaps things could become better here where we live. We, instead of shooting money up into the sky that goes nowhere and does nothing when it comes to space programs all over the world, we could use that money for, you know, the huge homeless population, for education, for real science here on Earth, for better health. Um, maybe less when it comes to the pharmaceutical industry, more with natural cures. We could see whether or not across the plane there are quote unquote aliens not coming from Mars or I mean, Jupiter, but coming from further than we're able to see now on this plane that we live on. 
Let's um, yeah. Let's let's. We've got so many questions, but I want to take a couple list calls here, um, so we don't have to make people wait too long. This is Michelle in California. Hi, Michelle. Welcome to the program. Oh, thank you. Hi. How are you guys doing? Good. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, so I'd like to touch on something you said. Uh, let's say we wake up tomorrow with irrefutable proof, and you know what difference would it make? And hi, Patricia. Hi, Mark. Hello. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Um, so uh, we 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 do have that irrefutable proof, which um, is being censored heavily by all these CIA-controlled programs that are now being exposed heavily. So, um, and and what difference would it make? I mean, it, it it makes all the difference in the world. It like you said, it leads to a creator, and it also leads to the question, well, why the hell am I here? What, what's my purpose? And so I think it, it makes a big difference. And we do have, we now have proof that are showing we've been lied to on a massive scale. Well, I think even beyond the CIA, I mean, CIA, yeah, you can figure the United States would be uh, manipulated or however. But now you're, you're talking about multiple countries and multiple people in high positions that are staying with this with this cover-up so it really makes you wonder I, I, I just I don't know how many people out there could keep quiet if if they actually if, if they knew this well compartmentalization I mean it, 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 it it's on a need-to-know basis I mean you can cover it up very easy the telemetry data can be hidden um, you know it's only the higher ups will know about it, and they can they can easily lie about it. That, that's a good point. Uh, thank you for making it, Michelle. I want to ask uh, Mark and Patricia kind of a, a, a take on what you just said, Michelle. Um, you had four hundred thousand people, from what I understand, working on the moon landings, and and we'll get to that in a second. Mm. But four hundred thousand people couldn't keep their mouths shut. So were those people thinking they were assuming that the, the if we follow this thought process, moon landings were not real yeah um were those four hundred thousand people uh thinking they were doing what they were doing because i can't imagine you could all those people could keep us oh they were all honest workers doing the right thing going to their jobs proud that they were putting building pieces that would go on something that would be on the moon uh yeah all of those people were great people who knew people who knew people whose uncle's cousin's brother built something that went on a space shuttle or went on the, the apollo uh, mission those people were wonderful people just doing their job. And they, there's only a small amount of people that actually knew the truth. Yeah. And that's pretty easy on a closed sound stage to have just the astronauts and a director and somebody doing the filming. And then somebody to put the, the images together so that it looked like it was what was we were presented with. So maybe like... Ten people, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I mean, I mean, you, you know, not very many. You wouldn't. Let's say you wouldn't even need many. Let me use the Capricorn One movie reference, which was really the only guys that knew were the high brass and the telemetry guys, the guys that were controlling the data, and which is why, by the way, you had to erase accidentally every tape from the Apollo programs. You know, all the telemetry data has been wiped out. You know, lost. Wow. Bur you know, apparently taped over. Uh, years ago, and uh, well, they say yeah. so. Well, exactly, it was but never there. Never there. really was yeah. any. There was never any telemetry data. Years. Anyway, sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, let's uh, let's take another call here. This is Kurt, also in California. Kurt, welcome to the program. Thank you so much. I had a. Uh, it, you were explorers by nature. I think this topic should actually favor everybody, regardless of what side they're on, to you, you know find the answers themselves. Go out and explore it. We're explorers. Let's do it. Yeah. Uh, speaking of which, Mark and Patricia, uh, uh, regarding experiments, you brought it up, and I'd, I'd hope to not end the show about future experiments that uh, Flat Earth plans on exploring. Uh, that is an excellent point, Kurt, and that's one thing that we preach on this program, if we preach anything, is that it's always good to have an open mind and don't go into a conversation with a, um, you know, a predisposed position because uh, you, know, you don't learn things that way. Well, exactly. I mean, whether I be, uh, I agree with Mark or Patricia or not, I respect their beliefs, and 
and their their thoughts on this, and you always want to be able to hear that. So, and we will yeah. get into discussing these uh, the experiments as well as we move through our discussion. Right now, we need to take a break, and when we come back, why don't we do that, Mark and Patricia? Why don't we address some of the things that were in the documentary sure. related to the experiments that were conducted? You said not everything was shown, and everything things were kind of presented in a way that may that may have been deceiving. So let's talk about that on the other side of the break. All right, our guests are Patricia Steer and Mark Sargent, and we're talking about the flat Earth theory. You listen to Jason JV Beyond Reality Radio. We'll be back after this. Welcome back to Beyond Reality Radio. The phone number is 844-687-7669. If you want to join our discussion, we are talking with Mark Sargent and Patricia steer about flat earth theory um before we get to the question that we posed prior to the break i do want to take another listener call guys this is uh mike mike is calling from kansas hi mike welcome to beyond reality radio hi how are you guys doing this evening good great the show. uh new to the show i got moved to sega ships a couple of weeks ago and was flipping through the dial and i found this show and kind of got into it i really really dig the uh, stuff you guys are presenting on the radio Okay. Uh, my question is, I want to go to this with an open mind. I haven't seen a documentary yet. What gave you guys the first uh, idea the Earth was flat, as opposed to what we've all been taught in, in schools? And uh, listening earlier about uh, experiments, uh, I wanted to give you guys, before I watched the fairly one-sided documentary where they made you guys look fairly bad, I guess, from what I've heard, uh, what made you guys first... Uh, uh, go on and thinking it was flat. Now, and, uh, uh, what did you guys do to prove your theory? Uh, and I'll, I'll listen on the on the radio for your answer. Thank you for your time, guys. Okay. Appreciate it. Um, for me, it was I first got into it because I watched a video by a German guy who was kind of speculating. He was talking about flight routes in the southern hemisphere, and they didn't make sense to him at all. And he was saying that the connections are all over the place and there's almost no nonstop flights. And the only way they made sense is if the world looked like the UN flag. And he was showing some diagrams like, oh, that's 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 pretty cool. And then as far as uh, experiments, no, for me, it was mostly just connecting the dots, which was I looked at it from the 50,000 foot view, which was, OK, if I was going to build the world, you know, because I, I dealt with a lot of video game simulations and I mean, I played games for a living. I was in the tech world for a long time. But if I had to build the world, what exactly would I do? And then let's say the powers that be didn't figure it out until about 1960. What would they do to potentially keep it keep it on the on the down low? And everything that they did was flawless in that regards. Everything that the government did was, was flawless. And every design aspect that I looked in this world was genius. So for me, it wasn't about experiments. It was connecting the dots. Patricia? Well, for me, just looking at the moon landing was my first clue. And then, I, as I said earlier, Mark Sargent's Flat Earth clues helped me fill in the blanks. But, yeah, looking at the impossibility of the entire NASA space program and the moon landings mm. with the technology that we had way back then and how we've not been back and that there's no rational explanation for that and how they cannot, even to today, construct a craft that could go to the moon. They say they've lost, quote, lost the technology and lost the telemetry data to do so. We all know technology doesn't go backwards. By now, we should have those flying cars that we heard about when we were children that we might have when we were adults. By now, we should have the moon colonized. I mean, 50 years ago till now and no nothing's happened? Uh, you know, to me, that's just a big red flag. And then as I did research, more and more red flags unfurled. Well, it's scary when you think that I got a thousand times more memory and, and capabilities in my watch. Right. In they, your cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> and they did on the, uh, on the shuttle going up. Yeah, that's uh, it's kind of scary. Yeah. We don't have time to address these other questions um, before our next break, so we'll hold them to the other side. But I do want to um, go back to the documentary for a minute. Was there uh, more information that was presented and filmed and offered to the filmmakers that they intentionally ignored? Yes. I mean, you got to remember. The science. Uh, the science. Yeah, yeah. The, uh, just about every aspect of the nuts and bolts of Flat Earth was removed. you got to remember that they shot for seven months in uh, locations all over the United States, and they had to whittle it down to 99 minutes. So they edited out oh, just about every monologue I ever did, everything that 
that Bob did, for example, with the experiments when he was talking about the gyroscope. And that was, you know, Bob went into great detail. It's like, okay, what's moving? You know, is the sky moving or is the ground moving? Or in Jared's experiment, everything around the experiment that he did. Uh, I mean, again, remember, they only showed like six or seven minutes of Jared's experiment uh, and didn't talk about any of the problems he was having until the credits started rolling. I was stunned that they even left that in. Uh, so get the bigger question, you know, why, like, like what, when they, why did they end the movie the way they did? Well, they were trying to take a, a cheap shot at flat earth. If, if Jaron would have failed horribly, then why is his channel still up? Why, you know, why didn't anybody replicate what Jaron did on the debunkers side? Uh, anyway, sorry, well, go ahead. And, and no, and I can totally understand, uh, especially all the stuff being left out for the fact you know, even when we were doing the show Ghost Hunters, I mean, we'd be on a case for three weeks, and you'd have we've four camera guys, let alone our cameras and everything else, and by the time you're done, you're taking all that footage, hundreds and hundreds of hours of footage, yeah. and you're whittling it down to 46 minutes or 42 minutes because of commercials, right. and you know, so there's a ton of things that get that gets left out, yeah. and on your show, I'm very very sure that they most likely left out a oh ton yeah of stuff i mean that would have... yeah but, but if, they... if they wanted if you had found a ghost let's say <laughs> but if somebody putting it together wanted to show you didn't they just leave that part out where you found right. the ghost and the film becomes completely different yeah the, and like the, the people under underestimate the power of editing that little cheap shot that the director took at me uh when the green button shot which was and he just found ran into that on accident which was he lingered on the green button after we left and it's like oh all i have to do is pull out mark hitting the green button in the beginning and voila mark misses the green button meaning he missed the obvious which means the globe is obvious mark misses the globe and so it was like what question before we have to put a break here if uh the uh higher ups i'll say of nasa and other organizations like that are trying to keep this a secret why on earth would they have tried uh, gone uh, up into space to begin with? It seems like they just would have avoided that altogether. Yeah. Don't answer it now because we do have to go to break, but we'll okay. address it on the other side. Okay. Right, you're listening to Jason JV Beyond Reality Radio. We'll be back after this. You know, it's a good night when you've got a couple of pages of questions and notes and you haven't had a chance to even ask any of those questions because the conversation itself is just taking on its own life. Yeah, I know. I'm sitting here looking. I'm like, I'm not even going to get a chance to get 99% yeah. of these. Yeah, that's where we are tonight with our guests, Mark Sargent and Patricia Steer. We're talking about Flat Earth. And if you would like to join the discussion, the telephone number is 844-687-7669. Uh, Mark and Patricia, before the last two breaks, uh, I've posed questions. We have had, haven't had time to answer either of them. So let's start with the one I posed just before this particular break okay. if there was something to hide right. and people in the upper echelon of nasa or the federal government or wherever they are knew there was something to hide why send a rocket ship ship up into space anyway okay so and and I, let me rephrase that which is why would you f have to fake the space program and that is because if you don't, sooner or later, the private corporations are going to get involved, mean, meaning that you have to militarize space. It was something that bothered me for a long time, which is why would you fake the Apollo program? Why? I, I never came up with a good enough reason for that years ago, which was, OK, fine, wave the flag, rah, rah, go USA. We're the greatest. I get that. It's a good answer, but it's not a great answer. When you get into flat Earth, it kind of answers itself, which is OK. You don't want to fake the space, the, the, the moon landing. You have to. Because if you don't, eventually... Remember, because NASA is just a, um, a compilation of different corporations like General Dynamics or Boeing or McDonnell Douglas or Lockheed Martin. And those corporations make the parts for NASA. Well, those are, the, those are the heavy hitters. They could actually do their own space programs eventually. You do not want them teaming up with other corporations. I don't know, like people that want to advertise, like, like a car company or Frito-Lay or Coca-Cola or something like that. Militarizing space and keeping it under government control is the easiest way to do it. You go there, you fly multiple missions or fake multiple missions really, really quickly, even though they make no sense. I don't even want to get into the Van Allen radiation belts. And then in 1972, you just pull the plug and say, well, there's nothing to see here. Ratings are down. 
We're never going yep. back. Good night, everybody. And that's it. You shut. People lost interest yeah, is what we were told. Yeah, people lost but, interest. And so, yeah, faking yeah. faking space was a was a good move on their part, which is the, the outer edge and the upper edge. So the outer edge, you make the Antarctic Treaty in 1959 uh, and seal off the outer edge. And the same year, you announced the Van Allen radiation belts. And then eventually, and NASA was formed in 1958, which you militarized space. So it's... It's a it's a slick little way of controlling all the exits. How's that? And you get the thing that they needed to get a full picture of Earth from space. Absolutely. Although it was completely fake, they needed that very first picture to show people, look, here's where you live. Right. This blue spinning ball. Yeah. And that case closed. Yeah, no and, more questions. And that pic that Patricia is mentioning was not even taken until 1972 during the last Apollo mission. Uh, yeah. Wouldn't it be the first picture you'd ever take if you got on the moon? You were the first man on the moon. Wouldn't you take your hustle bad camera and train it on home yeah. and take a picture of the beautiful blue marble yeah. in the blackness of space? Yeah. But they waited until. They anyway, sorry. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I was going to say that one of the uh, one of the things that's often pointed to when we have folks on the uh, show that are talking about the moon landings themselves and that they were a hoax right. is this is the photography uh, question. There's a lot of questions about that photography. Yeah. Let's go to the other point because we're going to find ourselves out of time really quickly here. Okay. Um, there were experiments done that were either partially shown or not shown at all in the documentary Behind the Curve. Tell us what was left out that we should have seen that may have changed uh maybe the the tone of the sh of the uh, film the oh, how about just about every experiment that we performed in 2017 for one that the documentary team was fully aware of and fully briefed uh, everything from long distance photography and that is by the way the most obvious out of all of them which is we had people running to the beaches just about everywhere that there was a body of water taking long distance photography. And by that, I mean, if the curvature of the earth is what mainstream says, which is eight inches per mile per mile or eight inches per mile squared, then eventually something off in the distance is going to be on the other side of the curve. It's going to be behind the curve. And they showed none of that. Um, they didn't show, they didn't even talk about the, the massive laser experiment we did over in Hungary at Lake Balaton with at 40 kilometers with a military grade laser uh, that we shot with Guinness Book of World Records standing right there next to us and qualified the whole thing. Uh, they talk about, you know, nothing involving, oh, oh, sorry, I get, I get passionate about this. They didn't even show something as simple as when a ship supposedly disappears over the horizon, right. proving the curve of the earth, right. how we can use the P900 or now the new P1000 camera to bring that ship right back in to show that it didn't go over right. the curve. It, and, uh, and we keep doing that as the ship goes out further and further until well, our it, eyes fail us or the camera can't go any further. Right. They didn't show that either. And that's something that's always confused me is I'm, I'm a big uh, boat guy. I, I own boats and, and I'm out with the kids all the time. And when I, I see boats off in the distance, but after a period of time, I'll see less and less of that boat and it'll disappear on the horizon. Right. Now, how, how do you guys explain that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, get a member. Well, that, that camera, next time you're out with the kids, get a really good camera like the, the P900 or the P1000 and zoom in on that ship that went over earth's curve yeah. the boats the, and you'll see it again yeah the boat's not gone uh in fact 10 years ago you you absolutely would have had me with that it's like yeah the boats are gone they're over the horizon but not anymore with hd cameras uh with optical or digital zoom uh, you can crank these boats right back into frame in fact we've gone so far as to say there's objects we can see so many miles away that the only limit to the distance you can see is the thickness of the atmosphere itself. Because remember, we're just kind of breathing in a, a thin version of water, and that gets thicker and thicker over time. Uh, long distance, I, I put a challenge out to science. I said, look, show me a lighthouse, show me a boat, show me a landmass at like 150 miles or less that we can't see. Because at 150 miles, you should never, ever be able to see it. And we can see it in all light conditions, all weather conditions. Uh, and uh, amazing distances. And when you get up. And now we're using infrared, oh, yeah. which is a brand new aspect that wasn't around in 2017 that was utilized for flat earth right. to be able to see even more clearly, much further than the measurement of eight inches per mile squared yeah. that NASA and science gives us for this rotund ball we supposedly live on. Yeah. Um, we've, we've really, since during 2017 when the documentary was filmed and post, we've done countless experiments using multitudes of methods. Right. And many of those, Daniel Clark and the people involved in Behind the Curve knew about and dismissed because it didn't fit the narrative they wanted to tell. Yep. 
All right, let's jump to a listener call here. This is Kosho in Texas. Hi, Kosho. Welcome to the program. Hey, hey, how you guys doing? Good. Welcome to the show. Hey, thank you. Um, actually, I had, a, I had a question. You guys kind of touched on it about the documentary um, and Bob Nodell's um, measurement. Yeah. He, he, he um, addressed. He had 15 degrees per hour. He, he'd found it on a ring laser um, gyroscope. Mm. And so I know this is a, it's kind of big news in um, the FE world right now. And so I, I'm, I'm curious to see from um, both Mark and Patricia if they, you know, believe Bob that he, he did, um, they did see this 15 degrees per hour on the ring laser gyroscope. And if so, um, you know, what would they attribute it to if not the Earth spin? I'll just say this really quickly and let Mark take over. Not the Earth spinning but the sky above us moving. Just imagine a still earth, and what's really moving when you look up is the sky moving. Right, right. But it, That's it in a nutshell. Yeah, I, I really couldn't probably elaborate that much more. I mean, everyone's seen the time lapses of everything at night, and that is, which is what all cultures have saw, you know, witnessed for thousands of years up until about 500 years ago, where they saw the sky moving. So the question is, why did it change? It's because science got involved and they changed the rules. And yeah, and they just told us, no, yeah. it's not the sky moving like you can clearly see. It's you that's moving. Yeah. Even though they had no way to look at the Earth in that manner, they had no way of uh, up. I mean, they told for 500 years. They said, oh yeah, it's a globe. It's a globe. It's a globe. It's even though the highest you could ever go was a balloon for the longest time. We didn't even have aircraft until 100 years ago. Anyway, go ahead. Okay. Uh, is uh, Kosho gone? Mark, curious, what, what, what did the sky have to do with that? Because the sky is moving. Yeah, that's so, the rotation so that is the, the, gy the gyro oh, so, was picking up. Yeah, is the gyro picking up the ground or is it picking up the sky? Mainstream science will say it's the ground. We're saying it's picking up the sky. All right, thank you for the call, Kosho. We appreciate that. Um, you, we, you know, we only have a few minutes left. I do want to ask you about your conference because I know it's, what, it's a couple years uh, you've been doing this now? Yeah, yeah, we did. Uh, the first conference was in 2017 in Raleigh, and then we had one in Canada and one in Denver in 2018. Oh, I'm sorry, and one in, in London uh, in the UK. And this year we've got uh, one, two, three, four, like eight in Amsterdam, yeah, New, Amsterdam Zealand, New Zealand, England, yeah, Calgary. Yeah, they're all over the place. And Dallas. Oh, wow. All right, well, that's terrific. Mount Shasta yeah. as well. Yeah, Patricia and I are heading <laughs> heading down to the New Zealand conference here in about a month. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh, that's 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 amazing. Yeah, Jason and I are hoping to hit hit one of those at one of the on one point. Um, these conferences, first of all, how many people do you get uh, at any of them in particular? And then, you know, what's what's the tone? Is is it a debate or is it is it um, uh, an educational experience? What's the what's the effort there? It's it's kind of both. Um, it's I wouldn't say much of a debate. First of all, hundreds of people, definitely, uh, depending on where you are. Between 200 to like 600. Yeah. But I know that this year around, it's going to be perhaps maybe more, yeah. depending on the location, of right. course. But it's it's really kind of a giant party because for a lot of these people, uh, unless they're going to the regional meetups, it's the first time for them to be around others that aren't giving them any grief, you know, f friends and family and coworkers. Uh, so the energy is just it just becomes cyclical because people are just just getting I mean like in Raleigh nobody slept for like four days everyone was just you couldn't even get them out of the lobby into the into the presenters area because they were just so excited. But there will be debates um, at some of these, and there also will be um, street activism at some of these events as well. Right. And you know then of course there's going to be different workshops at some of them. So. Um, aside from just different people in the flat earth, such as Mark, myself, and others getting up and speaking at a podium and showing slides, there will be many different facets. I don't want to simplify this, but does much of this argument come down to a creator? Mm. Uh, I mean, it, 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 it does. Some people think so, some people don't. I think we have we have a, some atheists in flat earth, mm. and we have some true believers in flat earth, too. At least... I. At least half of the community, I can't speak for other countries, but at least half of the community in the United States are strong Christians. 
And the religious side of Flat Earth, yes. Uh, in fact, I, I won't say his name, but I, from, a, from a, a strong Christian advocate, he said, I've never seen anything bring people back into spirituality like Flat Earth. And he goes, I've been doing this my whole life. And but when you go to a conference or a meetup, it is not a revival no. at all. And there's people of all sorts of, uh, all sorts of everything yeah. there. Yeah. So it, it's there may be a, at one time a Christian speaker on stage, and then in another room there's a speaker who's talking about something completely yeah. different. But there are a lot of people that know chapter and verse. I will say that, and I've learned more about chapter and verse in the last four years than I have probably in every year before then. Well, I would think if the earth was found to be flat, then the atheist, I mean, it would open up all these new doors for the atheist because there would have to be some, especially if we're in a dome, right. there would have to be sort of a greater power. That's, right. At the, you're, at, you're right. At, That's the, it. at the very least, there's some sort of greater power. But again, one man's uh, advanced civilization is another man's deity. So kind of splitting hairs. Right. right. Exactly. I mean, it, if there was a, if there's no Big Bang, which is what Flat Earth, and this whole thing was created, then something made us. It, each person will determine that on their own yep. at this point. Well, JC and I have talked many times about if, first off, I mean, if aliens were to visit tomorrow, everybody gets this impression that aliens are going to come down, they're going to be somewhere in between the height of four feet to six feet. And God only, I mean, an alien could show up on your planet, it could be the size of a, a speck of dust, it could be the size of, you know, uh, geez, it could be hundreds and hundreds of feet tall. Mm. You never know. I mean, yeah. they're coming from a different place and, and, and different, uh, different all around. Um, so the fact of the matter is, if there was, if we were this little, if, if we were a flat earth and we're covered in a dome, very possibly there could be this massive thing that, yeah. that would be controlling, just like us as when we get those little ant houses in our house. Yeah. I mean, those ant farms. Yeah, yeah those little ant farms. Yeah, mm -hmm. potentially. Worse compared to them and, and, and so forth. Yeah. It's it, yeah, it's very very possible. I'd like to think that there are older versions of our civilizations, still remnants of previous civilizations, still lying around. And yeah, at the very least, uh, whoever built this place, you know, did did God build it or did God subcontract out the work? Not sure. All right. Well, we have uh, run out of time here. We have enough time for you both to give websites, YouTube channels, Facebook, whatever you want to do sure. uh, for people who are more interested in following your work. Patricia? My channel is Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes on YouTube, Flat Earth and Other Hot Potatoes, and I have a small Facebook community page by that very same name. And uh, it just go for me, just go into Google or YouTube and type in Flat Earth Clues. You will find everything you need to know. All my contact information, including my phone number, my address, and everything is in the description box of every single video that I make. Well, Patricia and Mark, we got to definitely have you back on because two hours was not enough time. <laughs> not <to> nearly enough. <laughs> not nearly enough. Well, so, thank you. Thank, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. Thank you both for coming on and hanging out with us, and we'll talk to you again soon. Okay. So, All right. Let's uh, let's take a break. Come back. Wrap things up. Yeah, that sounds like something to do as my head's spinning over here. <laughs> so you listen to Jason and JV Beyond Reality Radio. We'll be back after this. You can I'm, hang up now, right? Yeah, I, I'm going to drop. I'm going to call you right back, okay? Okay, good. Bye.